anybody that comes up here and tries to encroach upon my rights or take away the protection of the Constitution from me and my family is going to get a bullet. And, uh, and, and that's just the way it is. They've stepped on their dicks this time. No matter what they do, they lose, and they know it. Because if they make a martyr out of William Cooper... Not only that, I'm right within the law. I am right under the Constitution, and I am right within the law, and it's all posted on my website so on the Internet. So you're saying you've dotted all your I's, you've crossed all your T's. Absolutely. You've drawn no your line in the do, sand. They lose. They either back down and get within the bounds of the Constitution, they lose. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I have to pause and explain a few things to a few people. There are those in this nation today who would have called those brave men fools. Seventy-seven farmers, boys, shopkeepers, tavern owners, none of them schooled in the art of military maneuver. Seventy-seven only to face the might of the greatest army that ever existed upon the face of the earth. An army that had conquered most of the known world. An army that represented, in fact, not a kingdom, but an empire. An army made up of veterans of many wars in many places. Troops drilled, trained, who had stood the test of battle. And these 77 men of humble origin who valued freedom more than their lives, formed upon the green at Lexington to face an army that they knew they could not defeat or stop. Every man, every boy knew that. There are those in this nation today who tell me and others who are taking the same stand that those 77 men took back then. They tell us that we're fools, that it's not worth it, that we should not risk our lives. They would have told those men the same things, would have tried to convince them to go home would have told them that it is more important to be with your family than to stand on this green and risk certain death. But those men knew something that all of these people who repeat this foolish message have never learned in their lives. If you are not free, you cannot have your family, you cannot have your religion, you cannot have the safety and security of your home. Freedom is the most valuable possession that any man or woman can ever have. Freedom is the ultimate achievement of all humankind, and until this nation was created, no people in this world, ever in the history of the world, had ever possessed it, not even for a second. The men who assembled on Lexington Green understood that you cannot be free, you cannot have freedom, you cannot have safety and security for your family, for your children and their children and their children, what they call their posterity, unless you are willing to die for it. They set the example for all of us. And that's the reason you're listening to this broadcast tonight. That's the reason I'm delivering this history to you, because most Americans have forgotten it or never knew it to begin with. If those 77 men had not stood on the green at Lexington, we most probably would not be here today. This history of our country, the glorious history of the United States of America, would never have materialized. Most of our ancestors would have been in different places at different times, would have married different people, and most of us today probably would not even exist. 
and we certainly would never have had the opportunities or the freedom. Throughout the history of this nation, that these brave men gave to us. Can you imagine how much courage it took to run out poorly equipped, poorly trained, if they had any training at all, with a musket, a few lead balls, a flask of powder, to stand and face the greatest, most experienced, most well-trained army that existed in the world at that time. There are people who tell us today that the odds we face are insurmountable, that we will be chased and hunted down by the most powerful army on the face of the earth today. And yet we know in our hearts that we can beat them because we are willing to die for freedom. No one is willing to die for the United Nations. No one. In the words of a later historian, deeply infused with a sense of the significance of what those 77 men did, he said, and I quote, They stood there. Not merely as soldiers, but as citizens, nay, almost as statesmen, having the destiny of the country in their hands. End quote. I am an American patriot. I have served my country for most of my life. I served honorably in the United States Air Force and the United States Navy. I was a patrol boat captain in the harbor of Da Nang and on the Quaviet River attached to the Office of Naval Security and Intelligence headquartered at Camp Carter in the Vietnam War. I was presented the Navy Achievement Medal with a V for Valor and the Navy Commendation Medal with a V for Valor for service in the war. Not one man under my command was ever wounded or killed while he remained under my command and I engaged the enemy more than any other boat on the river or in the harbor. I had planned to make the military my career. Needless to say, I could no longer pursue that course. What I thought I had been serving was not at all what I was really serving. I left the Navy with an honorable discharge on December the 11th, 1975. I have spent the last 24 years of my life researching and exposing the treason within our government and make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, it is treason. I wrote a book entitled Behold a Pale Horse, published an exposure of the Oklahoma City bombing entitled Oklahoma City Day One by Michelle Marie Moore. I publish a national newspaper entitled Veritas and I host a worldwide broadcast which began on May 4th, 1992 entitled The Hour of the Time. I reminded the American people who had forgotten what all of these things were. I told them the truth about the philosophies of the New World Order. I exposed them. I drug out the secrets from the dark corners and under the rocks and out of the stinking putrid holes. And I exposed them to the light of the day. We are not the only people who have been targeted for destruction by President Clinton and his administration. What Clinton has done to us is clearly, without any doubt whatsoever, abuse of the powers of the President. Me, my wife, and our children live from day to day, terrorized, terrorized, terrorized constantly under the threat of murder or imprisonment, which we know will result in murder, by the treasonous powers that have infiltrated our government to destroy it from within. I am absolutely 100% completely loyal to the constitutional republic that was established by the founders under the rule of law. The Constitution for the United States of America is still my supreme law of the land. To the rest of the nation, it has been subverted. It still rules on this mountaintop. 
in the Round Valley of Arizona. Indeed, I have devoted my entire life to the restoration of constitutional Republican government, to the liberty and freedom of all people, of all races, of all religions, of all places of ancestral origin. And I am ready and willing to die in defense of that cause at any time that God deems it necessary for me to do so. The worst thing that our enemies can ever create is a martyr. Any move to hurt me in any manner whatsoever that would not be a legitimate method or a legitimate outcome of some legitimate endeavor will be met with martyrdom. Tremendously dangerous and strong, active political movements always rise up around martyrs. While I don't really want to be a martyr, if that's what history chooses for me to be, then I will be that martyr. But our enemies are not stupid. They try to come at you in a way that will demonize you in the eyes of the American public or the public of the world. So that whatever they do will seem to be legitimate. But my knowledge of the law has stymied them in that respect because I've challenged them on every issue and they have defaulted. And so they're betting that some local sheriff's deputy or local police officer uh, is going to arrest me, in which case if they attempt that, I'll have to shoot them. Or they'll have to shoot me. And that's what the federal government is counting on. Then they can really demonize me by saying I murdered some police officer who was doing something he should never have been doing in the first place and was actually the one committing the crime against me. And I know all of you are scratching your head because you've been taught so many lies all your life you think this is absolute total bullshit, but it's the absolute complete and total truth. They're not going to let me get away with doing this forever, so the day they come to put me in prison or kill me, you'll all know that for sure, because it will happen sometime in the future. I don't know exactly when, but it will, and I've known that from the beginning.